one of the biggest responsibilities is always making something fresh without destroying the spirit of it, the mm -hmm. thing that the fans love the most. Yeah. And that is always what Gabriel and I have tried to be very careful of, is to give them those moments where even if Beast Boy only turns green when he's an animal, yeah. you still feel like he's Beast Boy 100% of the time as exactly. a reader and a fan. Kids come up to you, they got the Beast Boy cosplay, Raven, and you're about to introduce the iconic Teen Titans character, Robin. Robins. Robins. So That's could you surprise. talk? So my Teen Titans series with Gabriel Piccolo is incredible. Unbelievable. And so much fun. And in Beast Boy Loves Raven, we had, you know, Raven and Beast Boy met. And obviously Kong, his monkey, makes a, he continues on. And so does uh, Max, who is Raven's foster sister in our universe. And we introduced uh, what I like to call our first Robin, which is Damian Wayne. And the backstory on this is in my, you know, I pitched this whole series before I found Gabriel. And the coolest thing about it was that Gabriel was doing Titans in their regular clothes, yep. which was kind of the cornerstone of my pitch. Because because they said, we really want you to make the characters relatable. So I'm like, I want it to seem like you could go to school with one of the Titans and mm -hmm. not know. And when we, in my original pitch, Damian Wayne was the Robin. And once Gabriel and I got to know each other, he was kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm just really sad because I really love Dick. <laughs> of course. And I was like, he's a well, Teen Titans I fan. really love Damien. And <laughs> Damien is like, so my speed. So kind of as a secret, uh, I was working with my two editors, Courtney Jordan and Christy Quinn. I kind of secretly reworked the Robin book and I fa figured out a way to have both Dick Grayson wow. and Damien Wayne. So Damien is introduced in Be Spoil Loves Raven, yeah. kind of midway through. And then the big, you know, the big moment is in Robin, which comes out 23. It is uh, that Dick is going to be on the page in a big way. Oh my way. goodness, that is so exciting. And what I love about this is like, there's been many Robins. I'm a Carrie Kelly super stan. Like I love every kind of Robin, but Dick and Damien together, that's Batman's first son and Batman's, you know, inverted commas, real son. That is such a great team. And it is a brother story. It yeah. is about, and people keep saying, oh, is it a Gotham story? You do see a little of Gotham, mostly yeah. Alfred, because I love Alfred also. <laughs> um, when you see kind of Dick taking off to find his baby brother. But it really is the story of, you know, Damien doesn't know Bruce. And he kind of comes on, that gets dropped off by his mother on the doorstep. And Bruce already has this kind of adopted, pseudo-adopted son. You know, for a kid who's never known his father, he feels very replaced. Yeah. You know, like my dad didn't want me or, you know, mm -hmm. but which isn't actually true because in the story, like canon, you know, that he didn't know about him. Exactly. But when you're, you know, 16 years old, it doesn't feel that way no. when you meet the new son. Yeah. So what it really is, is like Dick is excited to have a brother mm -hmm. and wants to know Damien and Damien wants nothing to do with it. Oh. He does not want to know him. He doesn't want to know Bruce. He wants out. And he kind of gets absorbed into our new Titans group where they, you know, this becomes kind of his found family. Yeah. Even though he has run off and left Gotham and doesn't want anything to do with Dick, Dick is not having it. <laughs> he is like going to find his brother. And so we also get to meet Dick. And over the course of this book and book five, which I can't tell you what it is, but I know. <laughs> but yay, book five. You, you will have to see kind of how you they're navigating that sibling mm -hmm. relationship. And as someone with five siblings, wow. uh, I grew up with four brothers. And then when I was in college, my sister was born. But as someone with a lot of brothers and also watching brothers mm -hmm. fight and argue yeah. and still love each other, it's a great story. And how happy was Gabriel when you told him? Oh my gosh, he was so happy. He didn't even know what to do with himself. Yeah. And he was really happy because he was excited also to get to create Damien. Mm -hmm. And it was fun because it gave him a challenge because, you know, in If They're Robin, you know, both of them kind of wear the Robin outfit. Yeah, of course. So Dick has kind of gave your, Gabriel's classic kind of um, fan art version of, mm -hmm. you know, Robin with like the Letterman jacket yeah. and stuff. And then Damien is like tactical Robin. Ooh. And because there's like parkour in it, which I love. Oh, and so Gabriel knocked it out of the park. But one of the things that Gabriel really shines at is character design. Yeah. He really pays attention to the details. One of the things I love is like Damien has a batarang. And it like he has a special like slot on his belt, <laughs> his tactical belt that it fits in. 
So, you know, one of the challenges of this series is, you know, now Gabriel's almost finished drawing book four and yeah. they have greenlit all six books. And, you know, it is as a writer, my job is really to keep this really fun for him. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that I try to do that is, you know, each book is set in a completely different area, different yeah. type of city. This one, uh, you know, Robin is that there's a lot of beach environment. So I'm always trying to think of like, what has Gabriel not drawn? Because yeah. I, you know, I need to keep it fun for him so he doesn't get burned out. Definitely. And for Gabriel as well, he loves to do costume design characters. Like you said, I mean, he was such a successful fan artist for his Teen Titans Absolutely. kind of casual. So doing beach and different locations, you get to draw different outfits. Oh yeah. He drew some, some very cute swim trunks. <laughs> he has some cute trunks. So I, I feel like the thing that I really love about this series is kind of like, you know, the way I felt about when I was, you know, co-authoring Beautiful Creatures. Mm -hmm. Like, when you know that the readers and the fans love the series so much, yeah. and they've already bought in, you can do this thing where you're just constantly planting like little gifts to them. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a mouse page, was what the editors and I called the mouse page in Robin, that is this moment with Raven that is so adorable, I can't even stand it. <laughs> and it's like Gabriel's gift, you know, he can draw kids, animals, mm -hmm. like, and so really, as, as I have become a better writer of graphic novels, since obviously the first book, yeah. Raven, was Gabriel and both of our first graphic novel. Yeah. Now that I feel I'm a better writer, what I really try to do is give, you know, him these moments that I know he will get to play around or do yeah. something spectacular. It's the best whenever I, I write comic books as well. And you always ask the artist, what do you want to draw? That's like the best thing to do. So how does it feel for you? You mentioned that. Raven, that's you both first graphic novel. How does it feel now? Six books have been greenlit. This is a hugely popular series. Kids dress up as these characters. It's best selling. What is that? It's not the first best selling thing but, that you've done, but like it's a best selling graphic novel about these characters people love. How does that feel for you? It's amazing, it's especially because I'm a DC fan and I'm mm -hmm. a Teen Titans fan. You know, my daughter, you know, I, I grew up with her watching Go. And I was a fan of the animated series. So I think one of the things that makes DC really special versus my, you know, prose novels, yeah. you know, my original novels that were not IP, is that I'm playing in this, like, very, very, you know, I feel like it's gold sand in the sandbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm playing in this sandbox with these these toys, these characters, you know, that I love and all of these people love. And I think... One of the biggest responsibilities is always making something fresh without destroying the spirit of it, the mm -hmm. thing that the fans love the most. Yeah. And that is always what Gabriel and I have tried to be very careful of, is to give them those moments where even if Beast Boy only turns green when he's an animal, yeah. you still feel like he's Beast Boy 100% of the time as exactly. a reader and a fan. You know, as you were saying, I do say, Gabriel, would you like to draw? In book three, he said, I would like him to turn into an albatross. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you were like, like uh... we're in a We're in a very constrained, not to have spoilers, uh, setting here. So when you do ask your artist what do they want to draw, you have to be prepared to figure out how, how to, to make Beast Boy become an albatross. <laughs> That's so amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, it's just such a joy to talk to you. Thank you so much. Yeah.